What is up? So there's been a lot of questions personally and on comments through social media. What is in my camera bag and what do I take with me on trips for traveling or for gigs or whatever that is? So we're actually, because of the title of the video, we're actually going through that, discussing, you know, everything that I carry with me. All this will be in the description for you to get for yourself if that's what you want to do. Have fun spending all of your money and being broke because that's exactly what I did. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So what is the camera that I'm actually shooting on right now? So I shoot on a Canon EOS R, which honestly, like I kind of robbed the lady, not, not literally relax, but yeah. So I bought on Facebook marketplace. I was shooting on a Nikon beforehand and I knew I needed something better and Nikon just sucks. I picked this up on Facebook marketplace and the retail value of this camera goes between $1,700 and 2000, depending on if you want the kit lens. If you have a kit lens still, and you've been having a camera for over a year, please invest in something besides a kit lens. It'll change your life. The kit lens that it would have came with was a 24 to 105 4.0, which I didn't want. I did not want a 4.0 aperture. So I invested in all my lenses. I have three fantastic lenses that I use on the daily nowadays, which we'll get into. Here is the specs for the Canon EOS R, if that's something you wanna learn more about. I got this for $800 and this lady, I just don't think she knew the value of it. I managed to pick it up on a prayer and just learn that she was selling it on Facebook Marketplace. This last summer, I was like, like my goal was to get a new camera. Like I was pushing so hard for it. And you know, she ended up selling it and it was, it's been a great camera. I love it. She's taking great care of it. I've been using it for over a year and uh, yeah, I plan on probably retiring it next year as a backup camera and then getting a new one, like an R6 Mark II. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with this camera. It shoots great video, 4K, 30 megapixel camera, which is, phenomenal here's some photos on the screen right now for you i use it for studio i use it for sports i use it for travel content and it's honestly been a great camera and really happy with it okay so since i don't have a backup camera right now and then the lens that's being used for this video is a 24 to 70 2.8 ef lens the great thing about the mirrorless cameras nowadays is that you can actually use almost any lens you want for any camera so if i wanted to use a sony lens i think you could only do manual with the sony lens on a canon system with the mount but i might be wrong uh i'm too lazy to look it up because i don't like plan on using sony lenses basically the mirrorless cameras you can buy an adapter, which is another thing that is in this bag. And I think I got it for like, what, a hundred bucks on retail. And the adapter lets you use old Canon lenses on the newer products. So like the newer products use an RF mount system and the older ones use an EF mount system. That's just the name, the terminology they use. Sony uses like the E mount lenses and I don't remember what their old ones were. And then Nikon uses like the Nikkor. So there's always, they, they have these like different names, but EF is like the older, like the 2010s generation of lenses. Lenses. Then the newer lenses are called the RF, which have really awesome control rings. So this on top of my Canon EOS R is being shot on a 24 to 70 EF 2.8 aperture. Great lens. I'll probably get the RF version maybe down the road. The EF one does fine. I only notice like a little less sharpening on the, um, on the image quality, but honestly, like it looks, it looks really good. Like the eye detection is still really sharp and the lens is still pretty quick. What's annoying though is like, let's say I have this focused. See how long it takes to see how long it takes to focus. Like it's it's still really quick. Don't get me wrong, but the RF ones are like like infinitely faster. Like it's like almost like instant focus. So I can't snap. So give me a break. Let's get on with the other lenses that I use. All right. So this is an 85 RF. Great for photography. Great for portraits. For, I prefer to use primes for photography unless I'm doing like something for an athletic shoot. What I love about prime lenses when it comes to photography are two things. One is that you're gonna have more aperture to work with. The If it's not a zoom lens, it usually can go down to a lower aperture. So this minimum aperture is actually a 1.8, uh, which really helps in uh, low light situations. And then two, prime lenses actually have a sharper image quality to them, especially on the RF ones. So this is an RF STM. This thing has been absolutely amazing to work with and I have a lot of great images on it. I'm definitely gonna keep it in the roster. The depth of field, like behind, a subject is like actually insane. I've shot so many portrait photos with this thing. It's so cinematic and crisp. Even on video, I don't really ever use it for video. Even like the blur is just, ah, like it's just, it's just so good. Like I could geek out about it all day. And then this lens, it, like when I have it on, like my camera like looks like a toy. I try to never have this on like when it's in public because like, like I, I want people to take me seriously. Like this thing is like, look how, like it can fit in my pocket. Like, look how tiny it is. But just because it's small and only like $150, I think. 
this is such a great lens y'all like i literally love this thing i even have an nd filter for it like look how tiny like look how tiny the uh like look how tiny like the little lens focal thing is like the little like the glass it's, it's adorable just because it's small this thing is mighty i've gotten some of my best images have been on here and i will definitely keep this it, like for anything portrait related i am going to have this on like it's great i've actually shot weddings with it with it on like it's it's fantastic my first gimbal which we'll get into later it was perfect for it this was my first lens i actually got for this new camera because when i switched from nikon to canon i had to buy all my new lenses and this was the first lens i got because it was such a great steal of a price and it really taught me how to be really creative and create good composition with what i had and that's why i suggest that every new photographer starts with a prime lens these things will force you to get creative with your shots and then once you've kind of mastered that then you can invest in like a zoom lens but starting with a prime lens will make you a better photographer within months so those are all the lenses now we get to some of the more fun stuff which is this little cable bag i got this on amazon for like 20 bucks and it's great i actually left it open which is not good in this cable bag i got a couple things so i have my drone which we'll get into first um after this and then i have some cables usually my hard drives go in here I, I kind of have them like laying around on my desk, but like my hard drives, my SSDs, everything like that is kind of just tucked in here. Fits really nicely and it, it fits perfectly into my bag. But yeah, so cable bag, I think it's great to organize everything and have a bag big enough to have everything with pockets. Uh, it's kind of unrealistic to expect to fit everything in your bag. So creating extra pocket space is super important. Like, like I have so many cables and gadgets and you know, like little things that I just have to keep track of. And if I lose them, it's like, you know, like, I have to go buy more because I know I'm going to have to use it. So keeping track of everything has been really hard. Like I've lost so many Allen wrenches and stuff like that. So it's really important to actually keep a bag in your backpack to where it's like all even more organized. I cannot. Sometimes I just say things and they expect people to like understand what I'm saying. Anyways, this is my DJI Mini 3 Pro. This thing is freaking awesome, dude. Oh my God. This thing is unreal. Um, I'm going to play some cinematic footage while uh, you're listening to my voice. But dude, like literally, this has been the coolest freaking thing I've ever bought besides my camera. And I'm obsessed with it. I take this everywhere I go. In fact, I'm going to Montana and Seattle within like this week. And this thing is going to get that, hopefully get some of the most crisp shots I've ever gotten. Because I love this thing. The cool thing about this guy, like once I take this gimbal thing off, is the gimbal will literally rotate vertical or horizontal so with this thing i can shoot literally horizontal and vertical video which is a game changer for anything social media so with my last drone i had to fly horizontal and like rotate the cam like rotate the drone like it's in the air right i have to rotate it so that way stuff would be vertical but this thing like i can shoot 4k with it and crop it because it has a 48 megapixel camera on it it's freaking nuts i don't really notice that big of a difference between like the 48 and the uh, 12 megapixel system like they both look kind of the same because there's two options but i think it uses like the quad bayer technology something like the iphone uses but nonetheless it's great i can crop in with it it's super fun it has a flat profile for coloring and the only thing i noticed is that when i plug my photos in the lightroom lightroom has a hard time reading the photos sometimes so like for the color profile so i wish dji or adobe would come out with something that could make the process a little bit less annoying but overall like i'm still able to get those crisp edited images it's just kind of frustrating that a little like i don't know the color settings just aren't the same as any other camera device so this is the remote for it so i already spent 900 dollars on this thing and it was like an extra like 200 i think if i bought like the touch screen remote and i've never really had an issue with using my phone like on top of here granted i do live in a desert and my phone will overheat if I'm out too long enough, but most of the time I'm shooting, it's always like golden hour anyways. So never really been an issue. What's great about this thing is you can use it for weddings if you're licensed and you can even use it for your portrait sessions if you're a portrait photographer, because you can get some really, really cool images. Just even just a couple feet in front of the, up, up in the air, having like people in the background, like walking kind of far, like it would create a really cool image concept. I think every photographer needs to get a drone. Granted, they are really expensive, but like, Dude, like it is, it's so worth the money. I, I, I used to think drones were so dorky, um, but like, dude, they're they're so cool. Like, please get a drone. Another two things I keep in my cable bag is this for editing on. Um, this is an SSD, not an HDD. So this is a solid state drive, not a 
hard disk drive. I think that's what they're called. I learned the hard way with my, this is my second one. I learned the hard way with this is that you do not edit on these things. This is maybe for storing things long-term and picking off of, off of them. Got this for a hundred bucks. I store a lot of images on here that I'm, I know I might play around with later, like video, but you never edit on these things because they have moving parts inside. I didn't know that. I didn't, I thought it was a gimmick. So after this broke and I lost a ton of footage on it, I got another one solely for the purpose of keeping stuff on there and not messing with it until like another time. This is what I edit on because I edited on a MacBook Air and that thing is all right with editing. Like Apple's great. Um, the M1 chip is amazing, but there's not enough storage on there to actually like just continue to pile of stuff on. On top of being a college student, I have to have storage for other things like school and apps for school and it just goes on and on. And so this actually is great because it's two terabytes and this is the Samsung T7. Love it. So it has no moving parts. That's why it's so much smaller and it's insanely fast. I think the write speed's like over a gigabyte a second. Like it's just nuts. So love this thing. This thing is definitely worse for photographers and videographers, but I know a lot of people who use them. Uh, a lot of people don't know that these things are freaking breakable. Like, oh my gosh. Like even if you have the rugged one, it's still gonna break in from the inside. So I don't really use this thing that much. I have some old, old footage on there, but other than that, it's more of just like, I just kind of have it cause I've already had it. Then I upgraded to this. So. For storage, always, always get an SSD. It's either SSD or SDD. I don't know what they're called, but yeah, get one of these things. They're awesome. All right, up next for lighting. As an employee for GC Athletics, we currently already have a bunch of gear that I have to buy, but I go ahead and buy a lot of that gear just to have for other things for like freelance. But this is one thing that I've been wanting for a long time and I finally got, and it's a portable light. It makes everything so much easier whenever you're on the go or you just need a light or you're like, let's say I want to vlog something. It's just dark, like darkly lit. This thing is great. It has like two hours of battery and dude, look how bright this is. Like, look, see, see the difference? Like I usually have it posted up right here on top, on top of my camera and you guys tell the difference. So you even change the colors. I love doing this stuff for studio shoots and then doing long exposure and just like waving around. Got it for a hundred bucks. This thing is so worth your money. Uh, this is the Loom Cube Go, I think is what it's called. Um, I got it on Prime Day and don't regret it a single bit. It's really cool. Next up, extra batteries. These are awesome. I, this is actually a, a Canon one. And then this, I got like just cheaper battery options. They still work great, but yeah, I can't go anywhere without my extra batteries. I have at least three extra batteries on me at all times, just in case one of them just breaks or one of them just wasn't charged. It's impossible to kind of only have like one battery for a mirrorless camera because there's no like mirror in it, mirrorless. So like everything uses more battery, but it's way better. I hear a lot of people say, oh, DSLR is like better. No, it's like, dude, the auto, like look at this eye tracking. It's tracking my eye right now. You can't do that on a DSLR. All right, my rant is, my rant is over. Um, this, this is great. Check this out, bro. I'll trick and put this on. This is how it goes. Yeah, it is. I always forget how to put this on. Okay, so I, usually rock two cameras when I'm shooting sports and I needed to, this is actually a new purchase y'all. I needed something to work with that, especially for basketball games. I shoot a lot of basketball games. For those who aren't in the sports industry for photography, you, by the time you switch lenses, something cool has already happened. So I rock this camera with a 24 to 70 and then I rock a DSLR 1DX Mark II for my secondary camera. So the 1DX has the 70 to 200 and this camera has a uh, 24 to 70 on it. So I'll have the 24 to 70 strapped right here and the other one strapped right here. The, it, it weighs a crap ton, trust me. Like the 1DX Mark II is a mammoth of a camera. It's like this big, bro. So it really helps to have two cameras for that sole purpose and they just clip on like right here. So I can have it either strapped up here or up here. And I usually like to kind of have like some loose, you know, some looseness to it so I can just kind of grab it, take a picture switch so super useful i definitely recommend getting one of these i think i got it for like 30 bucks like it was stupid cheap all right let's see what we got here oh this is important all right so sd card holder i only have three in here right now you have to have extra sd cards if you're gonna be a photographer or videographer right now i think i'm using a 256 with a 200 megabyte per second write speed in my computer so this thing is actually what i edit on with the cool little 
you know, drive holder right here. And then I have this attached for, you know, other attachments, HDMI, whatever I want, you know. This thing is great. MacBook Air, I love this thing. Bought it last year from Best Buy. Um, I think I got like $200 off of it. They're always on sale, like $200 off. I think I got it for like 800 bucks total. Um, great, great purchase. Love the MacBook Air. I will definitely get a Pro pretty soon. If I have to write down everything I need to upgrade, it is freaking ridiculous so like it like oh this industry is so expensive this is what i edit on and i use it for literally every single project and i like having something portable where i can just edit on the go because i'm at i'm either at an airport or i'm in a classroom or i'm at like a coffee shop or wherever so but right now this thing does the trick i do need to get a monitor though because i'm always leaning over like editing like this so yeah anyways if you need a, something to start on for editing definitely get a macbook don't get a pc other than that yeah the macbook air is great and i've had no problems with it then we got an air tag that goes right in my backpack this thing is great because i don't care whether i'm in scottsdale or i'm in the ghetto part of phoenix like if i have my camera bag sitting in a car i'm gonna be thinking about it all the time so having like an air tag that just sticks right in there in case anyone were to steal my stuff is awesome. I can track anything I want. I have a couple of air tags um, for other things, but having one uh, for your bag, I think is so essential. Okay, so I get made fun of a lot for my camera cage. I don't know why people like to make fun of these things. I don't think people understand. There are so many valuable reasons to have this in your arsenal. One, it looks freaking awesome. You look like a professional. This makes your gear look 10 times more professional. Um, having it like clipped on right here and then like you have like a top handle right here which i don't know where it is at the moment another reason is that i can store so many different things on top of it i can store my microphone on top i can store that that cool lamp thing i showed you on top of there i could put my phone on there if i wanted to for like bts so it is so cool to have for that purpose alone two stabilization if you're doing anything handheld when it comes to video it is really hard to keep it stable. So that thing actually helps me with stabilization. I could just hold it like this and just kind of pan. And you could already tell a big difference with stabilization with that thing on. And lastly, like it just adds an extra layer of protection if you were to drop your camera. If you're not, if you don't have your stuff insured, it's really important to have as much protection as you can. So that way, you know, for a fact that if you were to drop, you know, if you were to mess something up, your camera would be fine. So it is definitely a big sigh of relief if you do drop your camera because it does add like a little bit of protection there. But other than that, it's just really cool to have. Like, I don't know, I, you can make fun of me all you want, Alec. I know you're listening to this video, so. Sometimes I forget I own this, but it's so cool to have y'all. This is a digi, did I say digi? This is a DJI uh, RC, I think it's what it's called. I don't use it that much, to be honest. I like that i have it and it's definitely useful for when i was shooting weddings and like advertisements but honestly i like the tripod look i, I like using, shooting handheld more but this thing don't get me wrong it is this is super useful to have and it's super lightweight it holds my camera really well stabilization's great i never really had to stabilize it through post after it because it's pretty it's pretty good it can't fit my 24 to 70 on it so i probably will sell it and get like the rs3 i think that's what it's called but yeah it's got like three modes on here pretty sick get yourself a gimbal if you do video it'll change your life all right there's still more stuff in here oh my god these are ND filters. They're like sunglasses for your camera. Um, if you're in the photography only round, you probably have no idea what that even means. Basically, I'm already in a pretty decently lit room. It might be a little underlit, honestly, but this thing will actually dim the light even more and kind of act like a pair of sunglasses for your camera lens. Highly recommend getting an ND filter. I know some people who don't use them and they somehow get away with it, but I mean, so I can't, I, I need these things. I have a couple of these things. This one's actually un unopened, but this is a microfiber cloth. Very, very useful to have for cleaning lenses. Definitely having these things is really useful for cleaning your sensor or cleaning your lens. Really great stuff. What was I gonna show y'all? I literally forgot. I was... Oh, this thing. This is what I use for cleaning my sensor. It's like a little, it's like a little, uh, little air blaster thing. Got it for like six bucks, I think on Amazon. Great for cleaning. Like I said, lenses, just an extra thing. If you have a mirrorless camera, you don't want to touch your sensor with your hot, grimy Cheeto hands. So having one of these just blow dust off is so useful. I try to clean my sensor once every like month. So this is really useful for that, just cleaning dust off. Because when you open up your lens, you will have dust that will go in there, whether you realize it or not. What else am I missing? Uh, 
I have two microphones. This is a bigger one from Movo. It was my first one, it was kind of cheap. And then the second one on here uh, is a Rode VideoMic Pro, which is pretty great. I've had it for like almost a year. It hasn't ever given me any issues. It does its job. I'll probably upgrade to a DD sometime soon just for like a more dynamic range in the audio. Other than that, like having two mics is definitely useful in case one of them breaks. I don't really ever use this one. It kind of just sits in my bag. It is nice to have like an extra, like I was saying. All right, and then what I have now is this bag from Lululemon. I get made fun of a lot for having this too, but okay. This is what uh, what's awesome about it is not only do I usually have the cool dual camera strap setup, right? This thing gives me unlimited storage capabilities. So check this out. I have a pocket right here, like right here. And then I have a pocket inside here with two extra pockets in there. Anyways, so that is pretty much what's in my camera bag. Hopefully this helps and hopefully this gave you kind of like more of an idea of like what you want in your camera bag. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. There's a new Montana and Seattle video coming up pretty soon on the channel. I'm really excited to get that on there. I'm leaving in four days to go fly over there. There'll be some insane content, um, staying with some friends and getting out of this desert heat. So stay tuned for that video coming out, hopefully in the next couple weeks. Really appreciate y'all watching and uh, hope you all have a good one.